They're just let learning them, body parts. Let know? them study each other's Grey's Anatomy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, just, there just he let is. Them, yeah, that's there good. it is. Hell <laughs> yeah. Oh, my fist bump like a pun. What's up, Wikimaniacs? Welcome to Reddit on Wiki, where we scour Reddit in search of some of the wildest stories the internet has to offer. My name is Josh Shell, and back at it again are my co-hosts, John Consignato and Sean Salvino. What's up, boys? Hello. Hola. Glad to be uh, back. Yeah, it's good to have you back, Sean. Uh, technically, your second episode back. Yeah. But, but uh, my first, first asshole. Exactly, which mm. is where we truly were born. Uh, this podcast was born anyway. <laughs> I'm about to say, I'm pretty sure I came out somewhere else. Biology no, 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 class no. taught me wrong. <laughs> we were all born onto this podcast. Uh, we didn't exist mm. before it. Wow. Yeah. We're actually all AI generated. Uh, <laughs> none of us Your are real. Fear, yeah. Sean. I just had that as, a, as an act to, you know, steer you mm. away from knowing that we're all AI. Yes. Uh, yeah. None of us actually exist. It's wild to think about. Would have been hilarious if I did an AI generated story this episode. <laughs> God. That would have been. The prediction is strong already. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been uh, too obvious now. It would be. Speaking of today's stories, on today's episode, we have an inappropriate couple at a library. Oh, they oh. fucking. I hope he asked. Too early? <laughs> <laughs> might be too early. Yeah. Might we might be. get demonetized on Believe that. that. Uh, Opie asked their sister to forgive their family. And Opie moves back home after his baby starts sleeping through the night. A listener's husband can't be bothered to look after his baby. Mm. Uh, Pick Me gets called out at a wedding and a boyfriend <laughs> plans on proposing. So that is a lot of stories. They are short. A lot of shorter okay. stories this, this episode. So I'm hoping we yeah. get through them all. Um, I'm sure we will. And two of them are for the, for the, for the rich. We have two stories for the rich, as Sean calls there it is. <laughs> <laughs> On page, uh, Patreon exclusive stories. Uh, where an OP serves their guests disgusting food and mm. OP wears a wedding dress to a wedding. Oh, bad. no, that's bad. <laughs> we learned our we've lesson. Learned, we can, we've yes. learned that that is bad. So if you want to hear those two stories and get ad free episodes, head on over to patreon.com slash cultivate podcast network and sign up today. And Sean will call you rich, apparently. <laughs> we need to make an apparel or some merch that just straight up says the rich. Oh. That'd be cool. We do have <laughs> announcements. We, 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 we famously hate the rich. Maybe we shouldn't make that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't make that what we call our patrons. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, we'll come up with something better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll figure something out. But uh, speaking of merch, we got some announcements coming next week, which I'm excited, <gasps> yes. excited for. So. Gasp. Uh, get uh get pumped about that, Wikimaniacs. It's income tax season. If you don't owe money, you know where to spend your money. Oh, if you get money back. Wow. Yes. You know where to spend it. Sean's looking <laughs> hard right now, just me saying that, huh? Oh, I am rock solid. <laughs> He's bricked just up like a mother. Nodding right his head. <laughs> Salivating. Yes. Uh yeah. Is there anything you guys want to hop into before we get into the stories today? Man, let's yeah, jump I just want to say, already. oh shit, go ahead. I just want to say, you know, while we're talking about tax and you know what 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 you might get back from the government, uh, yes. that uh, just a happy reminder that my Venmo is at s e a n s n t p o d. You might have forgot; it's been a while since I've said it. It's been a while true. since I've been on. It's fair. So <laughs> let it be known: the Venmo uh, is wide open. We now have a joint bank account where I can easily send it or not send it. You know, it's whatever <laughs> I choose. But it, the option is there. <laughs> yeah, he could he could share it with us. Well, whether he does or not is is up in the air. But Sean, you are aware you have to pay tax on the Venmos that come in, correct? Ex what? <laughs> <laughs> I will happily take that. Huh? Yeah, uh, Ted Cruz will come looking for you if yes. you don't. Sean. I hope he does. <laughs> I fucking hope he does. Actually, send that oh, ass no. back to Cancun John. again. Too early in the episode. <laughs> yeah. Come over here, Ted Cruz. I'd like to see you try. I'd oh. like to see you try. Actually, well, with that, let's hop into the episode so that we, you know, get away from the politics. <laughs> 
too early. Too too early for politics uh, and swearing, mostly for the monetization. But <laughs> so the first story comes from uh, our subreddit. It's listener submitted, cross posted. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm about to say. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah, sorry, sorry. Do some freaky, freaky things in the library. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cross posted by our listener, Miss Steve Perry. And it's titled, Am I the Asshole for Threatening to Report a Couple in the Library for Cuddling? Yes. Let them do their thing, you know? Yeah, let nah, them fuck. See, this is, this, is, this is where I kind of, if it's like a college library, let them do their thing. If it's a public library where kids be going to get books and shit, <laughs> not Thank cool, that, brother. That is, that not is, that cool. Is more... Don't have sex where kids can be there. Uh, weird. I'm like, Very... I know this scene. <laughs> Yeah, Dude, that's fucked sh- quite a bit of scenes oh, like no. this. Jesus Christ! <laughs> uh, well, this episode's not getting monetized. Thanks <laughs> solely to John, I think, but that's okay. <laughs> I've said it's nothing. Okay. Well, no, I did threaten Ted Cruz <laughs> just a minute ago. Yeah, yeah. Texas is not gonna monetize on our <laughs> podcast. I guess I don't know. Uh, it's fine. Um, there was that random month where shots and thoughts just would not play in the state of Texas. For whatever <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Co- coincidence? I think not. I think, <laughs> I think not. not. I think he's scared of me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's hop into the story and see if this person is an asshole. Making it short, as I entered the library of my med school, I noticed a couple cuddling near the door. Med school? Let them fuck. Let them fuck. Oh, they're stressed out. <laughs> Ain't no just, kids at a med school library. They're just let learning them, body parts. Let know? them study each other's Grey's Anatomy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just, just let, yeah that's there it is. Hell oh, yeah. Am I let fist bumping like a pun? Yeah, yeah you are. Damn. Yeah. Is that a pun? I think it's just Maybe. a sexual innuendo. Uh, it's yeah, the, gray, the Grey's thing is the... Is <laughs> oh, fair. The, yeah. Their position was was a woman leaning and completely sleeping on her boyfriend's chest and he's feeling her, stroking her hair or whatever. I honestly felt disgusted because this was a library and not some place for them to date. They were even whispering, ew. I took a picture so that I have... <laughs> Would you rather them be loud as fuck? What the fuck? How dare they fucking communicate here? Yeah. Whispering is in the this library. Quiet place? Yeah. <laughs> Unheard of. How dare they whisper? I took a picture so that I had evidence when I wanted to report them and told them to kindly stop this or leave altogether or else I'll do it. They didn't listen, which made me escalate the situation further, even if they were my seniors. That caused us to make a scene and get kicked out of the library. Before departing and going off on our own ways, they made a remark of me being such a huge weirdo and getting in their business and ruining their mini little date for nothing. They called me a jerk and left with their friends who supported them. I don't think I'm being an asshole. Who the hell wants to see a couple cuddling? Weird, but still, am I the asshole? I gotta say, yes. I, as Same. much as I understand people hating PDA, I get it. You don't want to see that. But also, you gotta imagine a med school library is, has room for uh, all of y'all. You know what I mean? You could just <laughs> yeah. avoid that section. Uh, to, to make a whole scene is, I, I think I'm with the couple. It's weird. It's weird that you made a whole scene about it. Uh, if they were like fucking making out or just fucking fucking, I I get it. I get it. But it sounds like she was resting on his chest and they were and whispering sweet nothings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't anything X rated, it sounds like. So I don't I don't see the harm in what they were doing, to be honest. But again, like I said, I, I get that some people really fucking hate PDA. But again, it's uh, like I, the most conservative yeah. PDA. That could, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's right. not even making out or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm fully on the you're an asshole. Okay. I'm going with the asshole board too. I mean, you made more of a scene than that couple. Because <laughs> you started getting, I mean, it's understandable. If you're bothered by it, like what Sean said, that's that's your prerogative. Like some people just don't enjoy that shit. I personally don't like seeing people like doing PDA in public, I but I don't go like make a scene out of it. I just go Oh shit! And then move move forward. Yeah, from my and, then avoid it. It. and then avoid yeah. it. And then avoid it. You know, be a normal person and talk shit behind their back. <laughs> yes, you whisper something under your breath, saying "ew," and then move on yeah. instead of like "ew." I'm gonna take a picture of you and send it to the dean. That's weird. That's weird. That is weird. So yeah, I can see why a, they called you weird. Taking a picture of it is is definitely weird. Yeah. Yeah, over the top for sure. Um, there are two edits here just to add on. Mm. Uh, edit number one to clarify: they weren't really studying. They had friends with them at the table who were studying. Yes, but the two cuddling people weren't studying. They didn't bring any notebooks or pens or anything with them. They were just cuddling at the table. (laughs) And then edit two, 
forgot to specify the location. I'm from the United Arab Emirates. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, which I think explains quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's cultural differences. I could see it. Yeah. But I don't know. It still seems like a, you're a kind of an asshole in this situation. <laughs> yeah. Because, say- because you'd have to adjust to the culture where you're residing in. You know what I'm saying? And right. just to me, that person should have just by all means feel the way they felt, but not go overboard to that extreme of, of the thing that they did. So yeah. That's- you're in the wrong. Uh, it's hard for me to call you an asshole when you just maybe didn't know better, but take this as like a, a, a little learning lesson. Learning. But also, you know, if you're, if you're at a place you're not from, you kind of just have to know how to read a room, I guess. Like if no one else is freaking out about it, that probably means that, you know, you, you probably shouldn't freak out about it. I mean, if you truly had an issue with it, I don't know. I guess you could have just reported it. This and is not like confronted them. <laughs> like this weird. is like a, like an American going to like Japan and everybody just wearing like mask on on the subway because you know yeah, they don't want to cough this. in yeah. like in personal space and be like, actually, we beat COVID. Take your mask off. That's offensive. <laughs> you know, like that's like kind of the oh, same energy. Dickish. Yeah. yeah, just going into like a you know a place you know you're not used to. Maybe you don't know, but I mean. Those guys know better. The MAGA yeah, people do. definitely they know better. Do. But like, you know, just kind of like read a room. If no one's freaking out, I don't think you need to freak out. That's ironic. Read a room in a library. I like that. <laughs> God damn go. it. Good, it good is pun, a reading Sean. Room. <laughs> good pun. It's irony, not a pun. <laughs> uh, our Wikimaniac on our subreddit, Magookin Tekka, Techa, commented, said 100% the asshole, and they are going to be shocked by what goes on in the library stacks. So many oh. risky romps in the quiet section of the library. <laughs> nice. <laughs> in the silent yeah, library, no longer, baby. Let's go. Uh, turning pages and turning something else. Let's I can't tell you like the, the amount of times that I spent in the library, like not studying. Not saying that I was fucking, because I definitely was not fucking. In the library. <laughs> but like, I feel like in college, like a library is like a common place to like hang out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. You don't have to be studying to be there. You could just, your friends are studying and you're just like, they would be around people. You're chilling. You know what I mean? Like yep. I took, normal. I took naps in libraries, like in between. Classes. Oh, hell yeah. The quiet zone is a, Ooh, it's is, buzzing, a bro. Like I, I, I found it to be actually quiet, but you know, who knows? maybe, <laughs> maybe people were fucking and I just didn't know. <laughs> just, Hey, be quiet. The guy's sleeping over there. <laughs> There's kind of a, a scent in this. It smells of <laughs> sweat and bodily fluids. Ah, I don't know. Maybe. Seems like a good place to take a nap. What's that slapping noise? Mm. It must be really into hey, that book. Somebody is fucking clapping in the quiet zone. It's so inconsiderate. The no, plot you, thickens and so is something else. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God. All right. Moving on to the next story. Uh, also cross posted on our subreddit by Gracie lower score win. Am I the asshole for telling my sister to get over what happened between her and our other sister? I need more context. Okay. Yeah. I'll say in general, it's not good to tell people to get over anything. Uh, yeah. They're, they're always, you know, times maybe to guide somebody in that direction, but never to just tell somebody to get over anything. Straight up. Because yeah. straight up, no one's going to get over it if you tell mm. them to. <laughs> Don't just tell like me how- what to do. Just yeah. like how I tell Sean to get over the puns. Did you, you tell me to get over, over the that, puns? Yeah. <laughs> I don't he think you ever told John's me to get puns. over it. <laughs> no. He silently tells you to get over it because it's not oh. going to stop. <laughs> no, I never would. Because, you know. Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> He's too nice. He's too nice. The flannel's Sometimes. too wholesome. Sometimes. Well, uh, you ate. You ate. So I think you're going to be nice for a rest true. of the episode. Yeah. Josh knows the list. Hi, Sienna. Oh, hello, Sienna. They say hi. You brought me a cookie. What wow. type of cookie? A uh, chocolate chip, I think. <laughs> Is it gooey? It does look gooey. I don't. You can't. I'm say, don't say. I know that wasn't sexual. No, come on, bro. Like, I'm legit asking. <laughs> I know that wasn't gooey. sexual, but just the way you said it. You are pressed me right now, dude. <laughs> no, we were just talking about fucking in libraries, and then you said, "Well, Is I it, transitioned to cookie." Gooey? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Can you put it in your mouth, Josh? There it is. Stop. <laughs> I want to hear actually, you can chew. You? <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going to get into the story. <laughs> so, uh, so it's Emma the asshole for telling my sister to get over what happened between her and her other sister. 
I, 23 male, have two sisters. 27 female, we'll call her A, and 25 female, we'll call her D. A married my brother-in-law, 28 male, three years ago. That didn't work out, and brother-in-law ended up cheating on her and getting D pregnant. So the other sister, the other sister. Uh, You're the asshole, brother. She's not going to get over it. And she shouldn't have to. (laughs) There it is. Uh, So a divorced brother-in-law who ended up staying with and six months ago marrying D. D got the D. (laughs) The time from when the cheating started to the wedding was barely a year. A was understandably pissed, which I can't blame her for doing some things like not attending our sister's wedding. Of course. But she not only refuses to speak to brother-in-law or D... She was shocked when neither of them were thrown out of the family. We don't do that to our family. While we don't approve of the cheating, D and her family are part of ours. This means A often doesn't attend the holidays, and when she does, she never even looks at D or our niece. I finally confronted her at Christmas and told her she needs to get over it and make up with D since she is hurting the family dynamic. She went nuclear and cut off the entire family, and now I'm wondering if I went too far. (laughs) Am I the asshole? (laughs) Yes. Yup. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we did you one very some, similar to this, didn't we? That was, yeah. Uh, her boyfriend cheated on her with her sister and then the family. Oh, they wanted her to be a bridesmaid, right? Or something yeah, like that? Yeah, that's, okay, okay. that's, oh, that's what it was. I thought y'all were talking about the, the fucking comedian where he was like, make up with your brother. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that one that's was good. way more wholesome. <laughs> wholesome is maybe the wrong word, but uh, I don't yeah. think wholesome. Yeah. Less problematic. So uh, what do you guys think? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, asshole, dude. <laughs> you don't get you don't tell someone to get over something that that I, that I got to me. That's a traumatic experience <laughs> just having yeah. to deal with all that shit. So anyone that's I think Sean already said it like and if you tell someone to get over something like chances are you probably are the asshole. <laughs> True. I just think it's wild that like people in this scenario can't put themselves in their like he can't put himself in his sister's shoes and be like, if I was cheated on. And yeah. that with like, if I had a brother and you know, my girlfriend cheated on me with my brother, they got her pregnant and then married in. Yeah. You probably would feel the same exact fucking way. You yeah, would not that, want them in the family. And then the audacity to blame, blame them to say like, Hey, you're ruining the family dynamic. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh. Like you're lucky that she was even coming to any family events at all because yeah. like mm-hmm. straight up, I'd be like, is D coming? All right, I'm out. I'll see y'all like, <laughs> I'll see y'all for dinner another time, but I'm just out. That's not good for my mental health. Y'all could like her. That's fine, I guess, but I don't have to, you know? So, also, I don't and, know why you would like her or him for that matter. Yes. Like, I just, I can't Fuck that understand. baby too. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck God damn. Kids. Fuck Jesus. Kids. <laughs> I found a sound clip that I want to add to it too. That's, uh, it's similar to that. I'm excited. <laughs> to nice. It. Yeah. On, like it just... It's baffling to me that families cannot see sense when it comes to mm. other family members. Like they were married and he's got his, her sister pregnant. That's beyond fucked up. I can't even comprehend it. It's so fucked up. And then just to be like, yeah, no, you should get the fuck over it. Like it's, it's just, it's insane. Uh, <sighs> on to the next story. And this is the last one before we hit an ad break. It's cross posted on our subreddit by Disney can't stop me. Which oh. they stole from Two Hot Takes subreddit. <laughs> oh, so again, we, shout we, out Morgan, please. We're, we're begging for a collab episode at this point. <laughs> we will we're keep desperate. using your stories until you yes. come up. <laughs> don't, don't threaten them. <laughs> White See, male old. podcaster threatens female podcasters <laughs> on the local it. news. Mm. <laughs> That's not going to end up in our favor, guys. I, I hate to bring no, it No, <laughs> we lose that battle 10 times out of 10. <laughs> so the, the title is, Am I the Asshole for Going Back Home Now That the Baby is Sleeping Through the Night? You're an asshole for leaving. Leaving your kid. You're, you're an asshole for leaving in the first place, brother. Yeah. Uh, you're looking at the wrong scenario. The, the timeline is different. Okay. So, so he was an asshole before. Preemptively. Preemptive asshole. Okay. Uh, it is... Funny because yeah, the title is a bit uh, misleading. Misleading is the right word. Oh, okay. Almost in the okay. opposite direction, uh, mm. which you'll see in a second. So oh. I broke up with my ex-girlfriend at the beginning of last year while she was in the first trimester. In brackets, we both didn't know she was pregnant at the time. No bad blood. I just wanted to be on my own again. 
My ex finds out she's pregnant a few weeks later, reached out, and I made it clear that whatever decision she came to, we were not getting back together. She decides to go through with it, and now we have a six-month-old daughter. I'm not going to lie, I've never been the best with money, and she knew that. I didn't finish high school, and I don't have a very well-paying job. I work like a dog 10 hours a day, and I'm still in a share house, barely scraping by. When our daughter was born, I stayed at her apartment every night to help out whenever she needed. The baby has finally been sleeping through the night, so I decided I'd stay home now and take the baby for a few hours on the weekend whenever I have time off. I pay child support. So he's staying at his oh. own apartment. <laughs> so gotcha. it's like it's reverse. Away from the baby. Okay. Yeah, he left, came back, left, basically. Uh, I went without sex the whole time she was pregnant and after the birth. There was no intimacy between us. I told her that there was no relevance of me staying over anymore as the baby is sleeping through the night and she can manage during the day. I want my social life back now and I want to have casual sex on the weekend. Of course, I'm still going to see my daughter when I don't have work. My ex is upset as she somehow thought we were going to get back together and become a family. I mistakenly hinted a few weeks ago that I'd be interested in another baby in the near future if I got a better job. But mm, intended for this <laughs> but intended for this to come off as pl a platonic gesture as I just wanted a sibling for my daughter. Nah, f you you had me in the first half. <laughs> What? What a wild platonic suggestion. I just want to have platonic sex. <laughs> that in is incestual. <laughs> in what world would that not, you know, be a signal to somebody? Yeah. Yeah. It gets oh, worse. I want to have another kid. Oh, oh it gets you worse. must want to get together. Yeah, true. No, platonic raising a child. <laughs> What do you mean I, by that? <laughs> I also mentioned buying a house, but didn't make it clear that would it, it would be an investment property for our daughter, not for us. You suck. <laughs> yeah. It, when you're in such like a fucking gray zone type of relationship, be fucking clear. Very clear. Like, be very clear with your motivations and what you're doing and your intentions because things can get mixed up even more than they already are. And then you're like, well, am I the asshole? Yes, brother. <laughs> you're yes. keeping her in the hook as well. Like yeah. leaving like a false sense of hope. And I, yeah. you don't do that to somebody. That's you, fucked up. You, you also know who's not been fucking since that baby uh, was born? Yeah, the baby mother. The baby uh, mother, exactly. Yeah. She's I'm still sure recovering. She would, I'm sure she would love to have her social life back. I'm sure she yep. would like to be having casual sex. But here you are. Uh, Staying at her house, raising this child. Even you said you made your intentions clear before the child, but well, you've been living there. You're saying you're buying a home. Uh, yeah. You're saying you want to have another child, bro. You yeah. confused the fuck out of her. That's messed up. <laughs> it's fucked up. So I'll finish this up. This is where I think I messed up, as I can obviously see how she thought otherwise. We never kissed or had sex though, and I never initiated it either. With me going back home, she's taken this as me abandoning our family. When in fact, I did not intend us to have a future together at all. I think I may be the asshole as I wasn't clear with my intentions, but with no intimacy involved, I think the message was clear. Am I the asshole? Hold your judgment because the uh, person who cross posted this, Disney Can't Stop Me, uh, put in their title, OOP, forgot to mention them in the main post, he slept in the same bed as his ex for those six months. So they were sleeping in the same bed for those six months. Also throws a, you know... Uh, it signals to maybe we want to get back together kind of thing. Yeah. This guy's the asshole that only yeah. validates our, I assume we were on the same page here, John, that only validates our feelings on this guy. Mm -hmm. um, the, yeah. th a, a third mixed single added a signal added to the mix, uh, a, a mixed signal that was happening every day for six months. Yeah, dude. Why are you surprised that she's surprised is I don't get it. I don't know what you were thinking. Yeah. She would feel, uh, e even if you made your intentions clear, okay, nine plus six months ago, 15 months ago, <laughs> quick maths for you. Nice. Uh, even Very if you fast. made your intentions clear, that's 15 whole months of you fucking showing the opposite. So unless you're there every day, like you need to be sleeping on the couch, you need to be, you know, and then when you're saying, oh, I want to buy a home, uh, make sure that, you know, you're saying we're not living there. I'm going to rent it out. And then our daughter will own that. Don't say, yeah. oh, I want to have another kid. Don't sleep in her bed every night, man. Like just common sense. I don't you know. You would think. <laughs> I don't know. I think the only thing I'd add to that 
Uh, I also agree with the asshole, you know, all that kind of stuff that you guys said. Uh, the other thing is like, it's wild for you to even like, it was wild for you to be like platonically add another kid to this, <laughs> this yeah. equation. What kind of fucking suggestion is that? Yeah. But also you are going to be like, I mean, great for you stepping in for those six months and then paying child support, you know, bare minimum stuff, but then you're leaving and you're taking her for your daughter for couple hours a week a day what like what's the like you're barely a father why would you want to add another child to that just so yeah. that your daughter can have a sibling like that's so fucking weird why not you know not put your ex through that shit because you're gonna have to have sex to have another baby i hate to break that to you i mean unless you like insemination but why would she fucking agree to that just a a wild proposition all things included. Like it's just it's wild across the board for you to suggest that. Yeah. Uh, so asshole hundred percent. I think you guys said everything. So um, yep. Sean, Sean broke it down perfectly, man. I got nothing to add. Just a straight up asshole for that guy. Yeah. When there are shitty men, Sean is there to call them out. Yes. We're, We're all there. We're all there. We equally <laughs> take turns. We're there as a you unit. Know? Sean does all the ass kicking and we're just talking shit in the back. So we just take the money and, and, and run. Exactly. That's what we do, John. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of money, yeah. uh, Venmo. Here yeah. are some sponsors <laughs> that paid us money to show their product to you. Money, please, please. Please enjoy their product or service, and they will pay us more. So thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public service announcement. Our friends at Manscaped now have beard products and are going even further with their brand new Weed Whacker 2.0. Go ahead and tell the world that the leaders in below the waist grooming are traveling north of your man's South Pole. Nose hairs are a major turnoff. The new Weed Whacker 2.0 and their new beard line confirms they have all the best tools for his hygiene toolbox. Time for you to upgrade his game by going to manscaped.com and using our code reddit for 20% off plus free shipping. Let's be serious here. I should not be reading this ad because look at my beard. Horrible. This should be Josh reading. Uh, he has a superior beard. But you know what? Maybe after I use the Beard Hedger Pro Kit, I can get on Josh's level. Meet the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. It's the ultimate package that makes it easier than ever for the man in your life to craft his signature look. Your man, too, can have a beard as good as Josh if you use the Beard Hedger, the only beard trimmer your man will ever need. The Beard Hedger has a titanium-coated T-blade that is tough on hair but smooth on his face, leading to a single-stroke efficiency that brings satisfaction one stroke at a time. This waterproof cordless trimmer has a rotary wheel that gives him 20 haircutting lengths all with one guard. You heard that right. All with one guard, no more drawers full of 20 different guards. The Pro Kit is much more than a trimmer, though. It comes with four dermatologist-tested formulations for his post-trim care. Trust me, both of you are going to love this because he will smell great. This includes Manscaped's beard shampoo and conditioner, beard oil, and beard balm to moisturize, style, and shimmer his facial hair. The Pro Beard Kit also comes with three free Gifts, a beard brush, a beard comb, and scissors to ensure that his beard is ready to impress. The brand new Weed Whacker 2.0 offers improved blades and skin-safe technology with no tugging guarantee. It's never been so painless for him to mine his manholes. We're talking noses, if nostrils, manholes. You know what I'm saying? Now that his upstairs is taken care of, let's talk about behind the scenes. There's a winky face in the script. Now that his face is looking great, you must try Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0 for the full body grooming experience. Good news. The Performance Package 4.0 now comes with the Weed Whacker 2.0 and all of the other below-the-waist grooming products Manscaped is known for. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be delighted to see him covering all bases, if you know what I mean. Covering all bases to get on all faces. Take that out, Josh. That was not good. Anyways, if that sounds interesting to you, get 20% off and free shipping with our code Reddit at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com using our code Reddit. Trust. Manscaped for the only right tools for the job. Thank me later.
So I'm not good at winks, but all the YouTube viewers, that's for you. And we're back well, from hopefully a product or service that you needed or wanted. And I heard if you Venmo Sean, he'll actually send you a video of Josh with live demonstrations of said products. He yeah, may be if, clothed, uh, he may be not. Who knows? <laughs> You just got to send that Venmo to Sean. While my Instagram was showing that I was in New York, I secretly uh, went to Ottawa, put cameras oh. all around Josh's house without <laughs> his permission. And uh, just lots of raw footage of him raw. using Manscaped products raw. You joke about that, Sean, but we did a story last week where a girl had cameras in her bathroom. So <laughs> No! Yeah. Yes! <laughs> So gross. It Spoilers. was a bad joke. Spoilers. She was the asshole. <laughs> uh, be careful what you joke about, Sean. Lesson learned. <laughs> All right. Time to hop into a listener submitted story on our mm. subreddit. And this one kind of, you know, kind of follows up this, the last one we did um, in terms of fathers and babies and mothers and babies, you know. This comes from educational midscore and midscore five nine zero eight. How's that spelled, by the way? Yeah, I was uh, gonna yeah. say, did they spell it educational? No, that was a Damn slip it. of the tongue. <laughs> it's now just a uh, a thing that I do. Well, there is first per Sean energy. I don't know if you missed there that. There is Sean. that one. Sean has There's not what? seen that one yet. First per Sean energy. Yeah. What's per Sean? First like person, person energy. <laughs> but your name's in it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a new yeah, that's username. That's a thing. Yeah, that's a thing now. <laughs> God damn yeah. it. It's and great. they're on our Discord too, so maybe you can oh. ask them what what their reasoning is behind for torturing you. It's probably me. <laughs> Duh. Duh. Why would I ask? Duh. Yeah. We know. We know what the reason. We know. Is. <laughs> uh, so the title of this one is "Am I the asshole for asking my partner to get up with the baby in the middle of the night?" I will say, if this is a mother speaking about her partner who did not give birth this baby mm -hmm. then no if this okay. is a father or a mother you know either way that did not give birth then i gotta say you are an asshole all right all all that matters is who it depends on where the baby came out of is what i'm saying <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes i like it uh is that also your assumption well John? no i've i've had I feel like you were in this gung ho on the sean <laughs> stuff before i left and now oh, it's no, been two fully, weeks he fully committed it's been two weeks without me, He's, and you're fully John I'm now. I'm fully converted, Josh. Here, so, okay? and I love you, it. You know when you do a bit with your friends, and then you, like you'll say a word, and and then everyone starts saying it as like a as like a bit. I say it in my regular day to day life now. It is wild how much it's influenced me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like fuck. <laughs> I really said that to real people that are not <laughs> listening to our podcast, and then they're like, "What the fuck did you just say?" <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, it's less of a, a bit and more of just my life now. This is I real hate, life now, Sean. I hate it just as much as you do, Sean, so I want you to know that. Do you? It's like do. when you say something, say something ironically, and then it just becomes part of your Exactly, behavior. yeah. Let's hop into this story. So I, 30 female, always get up with the baby in the middle of the night when she wakes up. She is six months and female. My husband, 34 male, and I share responsibilities of putting the baby to bed at night. And I'm always the one to get the baby up in the morning besides some weekend days. But I like to let my husband sleep in on weekends since he works 4 a.m. to 3 p.m. and doesn't get a whole ton of sleep most nights. I work part time in the evenings and weekends in food service. The past couple of days, we've all had a cold that has knocked us all on our asses. I got home from work Saturday night at 9 p.m. and the baby was already put to bed. When she woke up at 3 a.m., I asked my husband to please give her a bottle and put her back to bed. He said, I can't, I haven't slept at all, I'm so sick, I was with her all day. Since I was planning on getting up with her in the morning, I was so upset that he couldn't just get up with her and put the baby back to bed, which takes about 30 minutes. Am I the asshole for asking him to get up with her in the middle of the night? Tricky one, eh? I'm gonna one say is a tricky one. <laughs> I'm gonna say nobody sucks here. That's everyone's fair. Everyone's tired and sick. Yeah, everyone's yeah. tired and sick. So that's... That's kind of where I'm going because it sounds like on a normal day when they're not sick, he's more than willing to to do that. Yeah, he put the baby to sleep in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. He does sound like a decent father from all right. things considered. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm going to go with no one sucks here. You guys are just victims of circumstances and your current health condition. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I've got to imagine couples who have babies fight like have have small arguments about that they would never have 
normally when they're not under this much stress with a baby and lack mm -hmm. of sleep and working. So I, I, I give a pass to both of you that it's just, yeah. it's a stressful time. And, um, yeah, like I, I get your frustration. I also get his frustration of being sick and not sleeping. I don't think anyone's in the wrong necessarily. Me neither. Exactly. It just kind of, yeah. yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough time. Yeah. It'd be unfair to call anyone unreasonable in this situation. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, yeah. it's, it happens. You guys get sick and it's just unfortunate that it was both of you at the same time. So yeah, I was a huge asshole when I was sick and I don't even have a kid. <laughs> right. <laughs> even though this was a, you know, you got frustrated and he probably got a little frustrated. It sounds like he answered reasonably and you didn't freak out. You know, mm -hmm. it sounds like you were just like, can you please get up? And he's like, I cannot. And yeah. then, you know, that's fine. And he wasn't like, no bitch. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you get the like fuck up. yeah, like it sounds like, you know, he was just defeated <laughs> yeah defeated like he literally could not and uh nine times out of ten i will say i'm usually you know super on the mother's side but this time is just like all three of y'all are, are wrecked yeah like uh nobody's in their right state of mind there and he didn't even do anything too bad he just said i can't yeah he's yeah. just like i'm exhausted <laughs> yeah. exhausted sick and i haven't slept that's yeah that's fair yeah it's fair, fair response. It is fair. And, and I mean, I, I, you were probably exhausted and sick and tired as well. So it's yeah. just a, that's just a, maybe a coin flip the next time and <laughs> just be like, all right, who's getting her? Yeah. Rock, and paper, like, scissors. More sick. Yeah. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors. My so, toxic advice. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to go. Oh, no, no, no one asked. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not doing it. I don't have children, so I don't have any opinion when it goes to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, so that might be our first listener. No one's the asshole. No. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I think Usually everyone in the comments also agreed with not the, no one's the asshole. So, yeah. Uh, all right. This one is cross posted from our Wikimaniac Moira Rose Bebe. Nice. Shout out Shits Creek. Love that show. Oh, is that oh. what that's from? Yeah. You need to be. What, what was the name should, again? I should know that. That's a Canadian show. I think Moira <laughs> Rose Bebe. Does she say right? Bebe like that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Not like not, not, not like Adam Cole. Oh yeah, I thought it was an Adam Cole thing. No, no, no. Am I the asshole for calling my sister a pick me over her wedding dress choice? Is this the wedding dress at a wedding dress, or this is the pick me at the wedding? The uh, the the wedding dress at a wedding dress is behind a paywall, Sean. Oh, uh, love that. <laughs> this one's Ooh. the pick me wedding dress. What what is a pick me wedding like dress? Like a pick me girl or pick me boy? So it's like someone who. Basically it does whatever you want them to do. Like, it, like they become whoever you want them to be in any situation so that you like them. I think that's generally what is the definition is, John, if I'm not well, mistaken. What, what would the attire be for that? I guess I'm about to find out. <laughs> that's a great but, question. <laughs> but I'm like, I don't know if I would see an outfit and be like, Ooh, that's a pick me. That's such a pick me way. That's a pick <laughs> me outfit. Dress, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fair. Uh, what about you, John? Any thoughts? No, I think, I don't know why, but I'm thinking pick me is something that's like, I don't know. I'm thinking like Mortal Kombat. I'm just like pick me because I have the coolest looking dress, but I don't know. Okay. I don't know what really pick me is either. What Your is, mind fascinates wait. me sometimes. <laughs> I, I need I to know think, the connection to Mortal Kombat. I don't know because it's like, you know, when sometimes when you pick outfits for, for like characters, I'm just like, oh, pick me. I don't know. I don't know what pick me means. So have you been playing Mortal Kombat a lot recently? You also made this. Like a connection to Mortal Kombat a few episodes ago too. <laughs> did I make one for Mortal Kombat? I you don't know. Did, yeah, I haven't played Mortal Kombat in years. Maybe my mind just goes everywhere. I don't think anyone has. It's wild that you're just bringing it crazy. I, I, I enjoy have a it. weird mind. My mind goes all <laughs> over the place. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, yeah. fuck you. <laughs> what? I just agreed with you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. What the fuck? <laughs> Sean's catching strays. Eh? <laughs> I know. My first day you. back. Come on, oh. man. We haven't had like a time together for a while, so I got to make up for some lost Why? Time. Why can't we just have a good time together? <laughs> I'm acting up because I missed you, Sean. Okay? Is that... <laughs> This is, you know, words of affirmation is my love language. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Job? Well, toxicity is my love language. So deal uh, with that's it, buddy. not one of them. That's not a love that. language. Well, I created my own. That would be something John would do. He's right, that actually. <laughs> you call your wife La Toxica. I think it's you, brother. I think it might be you. Wait. Oh, that's true. That is also her calling or her name in my address book. <laughs> Good God. I think you might be the... You, 
You might need to look in the mirror, brother. Yeah, yeah, mm, true. Take a good Actually, look. She's worse. <laughs> she's worse than me. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for her. We to gotta do get her on. Yeah. Nah, it's when never gonna happen. When we're in person and you can't do anything to stop us, John, we're gonna. That's do probably it. that's probably the only time I can say no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's hop into this pick me wedding dress story. So I, twenty three, female, have a sister, twenty seven, female, who's getting married in a few months. She's seriously considering wearing a dress with a rainbow print on it. Like, seriously, just because it's a gay wedding doesn't mean that she needs to be so tacky about it. Okay. Oh, yeah, you're an asshole. No. <laughs> <laughs> when I first heard her talk about it, I told her that just because it's her wedding, she doesn't need to act like a pick-me-girl. She got mad and said that she's going to act like however she wants to act during her wedding. And if I have a problem with it, then I can be out the door. You got damn oh, yeah. right. Her mom was already trying to avoid a new confrontation between us, but I wasn't going to let her get away with it. So I told her there's a difference between a wedding and an LGBTQ plus propaganda parade. Oh, 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 she's and, one of them. And she should warn her guests about what they're signing up for. Oh, no. OK, well, uh, real, real quick. If you're what? I, uh, I have so much, so many thoughts yeah. on this. Let me get, let me I'm get, like, there's, there's literally only one more paragraph. Let me get through it and we can just okay, go okay. in. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. I'm uh, so, what? <laughs> well, we ended up in a screaming match and with me disinvited from her wedding. Obviously my right. mom thinks that uh, she wants me to make things right and apologize to my sister, but I don't think I should. Someone needs to open her eyes about what she's doing, but our mom was always the type to try and avoid drama as much as possible. Even between us, am I the asshole? Yes. Go off. <laughs> Go yes. off. Okay. You fucking bigot. <laughs> okay. Weirdo. I'm confused. You need to warn your guests that the marriage between Real two propaganda. women is, is going to be gay. Yeah. I I think the wedding's going to be I gay. Think like, I think they know that it's a gay <laughs> wedding. I hate to break it to you. Also, you know, at first thought, me personally, I'm like, oh, like a, a pattern on a wedding dress seems kind of weird. But again, I'm not the fucking bride. Yeah. Who, who fucking cares? Also, <laughs> you're not the fucking bride. Uh, so you should shut the fuck up. Uh, so many weird things like, okay. And, and plus, if she picks the dress you want her to wear, does that not make her the pick me girl? According to, you know, the definition, the definition that we've been yeah. given. She's wearing what she wants to do, which is the opposite of pick me. I think uh, again, yeah. John, Josh and I may be confused on it, but I, jo Combat. Josh seems pretty confident. Yeah. Uh, so, so, uh, yeah, I shut your fucking mouth. I think. Yeah. My biggest thing, like uh, obviously everything you said there, Sean, this person doesn't understand words. Uh, that's not really what a pick me is. They're doing something that is cutting their own, you know, they're doing their own thing. That's literally the opposite of what a pick me does. <laughs> so that's wrong on that count. And, and then also like, like, so it's LGBTQ plus, a propaganda parade is 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 a white dress straight propaganda parade like i um, is talk that, that what that shit, is josh <laughs> like talk that shit i don't baby. know uh so it, it, it is wild for you to just i mean you sound like a terrible human being yeah to be honest but yeah exactly what sean said it's her fucking wedding let her do what she wants uh she's paying all the fucking money for it yeah and it sounds like no one else has an issue with this so why are you making it one uh, it breaks my heart. You said she's 23. Yes. To hear uh, young people talk like this is like, oh, insane. God. Like, yeah, I know. I know how and why it happens. But just to hear it is like, oh, disheartening. Uh, yeah, chan chances are the cake is probably going to be some sort of pattern, too. And I bet you that thing's going to be delicious. And you know what? I yep. don't have anything else to add besides one, like one small thing. Y'all broke it down so perfectly. My last thing to add. Love is not propaganda. True. Love is love. Yeah. It's yeah. just straight up. Like if two people decide that they want to be happy together and they want to make a ceremony out of it, that's love. It ain't no propaganda. And like you guys said, people already know coming in that it's going to be a fucking gay wedding. So <laughs> yeah. what other propaganda is, are they spreading? Like they know. Exactly. And I, I mean, I think it's beautiful that they are going through with this and they're doing, you yes. know, they're making it their own kind of thing. And, and that's awesome. Uh, I love that. Uh, he, here's a segment I might cut out later just cause I'm unsure if we should do this, uh -oh. but <laughs> I want to do cry last week. So let's do it already. <laughs> Did that make the you. episode? It made the Patreon section. I haven't cut that out. I, uh, I haven't asked John if he wants, I was going to ask him today if he wanted to leave that in, but do what you need to do, man. Okay. Okay. Um, 
So I want to do a comment of shame from one of our Wikimaniacs. (laughs) Uh, One of our people? Yeah. So we got a comment. Can you share the link? Well, I'll just read out the comment. I don't even want to give their, their username, but they know who it is. So they say, LOL, I agree with OP, but because of blasphemy, not tackiness. Uh, so blasphemy like, in what way? I guess if they were religious, it's, but they never said anything about it be a, you know, a Catholic or Christian wedding. So wild take. <laughs> so, well, we'll see if I leave this in. But yeah, no, that leave is it our, in. Leave that it is in. our comment of shame this week. Uh, you know, the first listener asshole was not meant to be like this. I don't <laughs> love this. Uh, it's not a story where I can like fucking dig into you. But I just got to say, you know, uh, I think we're comfortable enough to say, uh, don't listen to our show anymore. Uh, (laughs) Fuck you, actually. Well, Uh, I I hope you listen and learn something maybe from this section. Uh, You don't have to. I don't want you. You don't want them to learn anything. I I want you (laughs) to not have this show and think, man, why did I get banned? Uh, (laughs) You know, why take a lot. I say this a lot in jest, uh, but I'm telling you this earnestly take a long look in the mirror take yeah. a very long look in the mirror and realize uh maybe maybe i am a piece of shit yeah and uh yeah sit with that for a little bit yeah because you have no idea what kind of wedding this is uh it could not be your religion you know what i mean and so for you to call it blasphemous is is wild uh, that they comment got- you made is blasphemous and quite frankly <laughs> tacky so uh, not loving thy neighbor is what i will say uh, yeah very much come not. on I, uh, <laughs> oh Shout out. I know we don't do a lot of uh, Christian wins on this show, but oh. I, I believe the Pope recently was talking about how we need to, how Catholics need to stop being so fucked up to gay people. And Hell it's time yeah. We, how we'll how it's that. time we need to welcome them back into the church. And I just got to say, fucking big Catholic dub. Doesn't oh. happen often, but I love mean, that for, for oh. uh, my faith. A little late to the party, but I love this Gen Z Pope hey, we got going on. <laughs> be- hey. Better late than never. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well... <laughs> That yeah. it's, better, it's, it, it's nice. It's nice that it's be- it's happening. Uh, it is very late, is what I'll say. <laughs> but we're here for it. We're here for well, it. Well, they used to be Vatican. Now they're Vatican. You know, because they're making progress. So that's yeah. that's a good thing. God, yeah. you made me mad about my own religion just now, John. <laughs> Sorry, it is what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, so they got uh, blown up. Uh, they're in negative karma. So nice, good because you're uh, a negative person for thinking that. Why is it blasphemous? Why is love blasphemous? One hundred percent, John. Perfect. And like, and like what Sean said, you might want to take a look in your mirror. There's a lot of probably streak shit going on in your mirror, and you might want to clean it to get a better look at yourself. You're gonna clean Windex it, and it's out. still shit looking in there. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Hoping, we gotta we yeah. gotta flame you. We gotta flame you. Yeah, yeah. We call out assholes when we see them, and uh, our listeners are are not safe either. If that happens to be, I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna look at that comment, and probably give you another negative karma. <laughs> I did too. So, oh shit, you might want to. Sean Hemsworth right. might have something to say about it. <laughs> mm. Actually, Mm-mm. I don't uh, know him, but I have he, a feeling he's a great guy. I hear super hot. Call us woke all you want. I'm expecting a one star review already, but call us woke all you want. (laughs) I don't give a damn. I just want this place and this space to be as inclusive and as open minded as possible. And I think most of our listeners are that way. And you saying that shit, uh, it doesn't fly by me at all. 100%. All right. With that, we're going to move into our final story before we hit the Patreon story episodes. I'm mad Uh, now. I knew that would make you bad too. Fuck. <laughs> Cross posted on our subreddit by user flying dash plant or flying mid score plant. I almost said Ooh. dash, whatever the fuck that is. They've been used a lot lately. So. Yeah, we used them last episode, I think. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, awesome. They're doing, they're doing great. Uh, am I the asshole if I tell my friend her boyfriend is planning to propose? Yeah. No. Uh, you got oh, to give him a surprise. <laughs> you got to get, you got to give him a you gotta give if them the opportunity. If you to be surprised, know your though. friend does not want to get engaged, okay, that's that's uh, fair. okay. Then fair. You gotta be like, he's gonna fucking do some stupid shit. I'd maybe tell him. That's you fair. Know? <laughs> but then you know, yeah, that that's the first thing. The first thing is telling him, being like, I don't think she wants this. Fair enough. Fair enough. But you know, if he's like, you don't know our relationship, then you might want to be like. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I should I cock block. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's her, her, maybe it's not her place to say no to this. Here's my thing on that shot. Like, I, and I'm not even going to go into 
whether that's right or not. But like, even even if he's going to propose and you know your friend doesn't want that, she can say no. She has the autonomy to do that. So why not yeah. just let that happen? Organically happen. Yeah. yeah. Unless it's like, I'm going to propose. Abusive or whatever. No. Well, that too. But okay. I'm going to propose at a fucking large event Wedding. where Garden. she'll she'll have to say yes <laughs> because of the implication. Implication. Disney World. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point too, Sean. I'm so, going to be wrong on all of this, I'm sure. Oh, we'll see. You never know. You never know. We'll My 27 female best friend has been dating her boyfriend, 26 male, for over five years. A while back, he reached out to me to help figure out ring size and set up so that I could make this most magical moment for her. Having known my friend for 20 plus years, I know exactly how she'd want the proposal to go and who she wants to be there. So I relayed all this information to him months ago via text and over the phone. I even took the time to covertly find and confirm which ring she would love the most. A little background. My friend is incredibly family and friend oriented and in the past expressed to me on multiple occasions that in the five years they've been together, he hasn't really made much of an effort to indoctrinate himself into her family or friendships Whoa. the way she has for his. That's giving me weird vibes. Indoctrinate. Why? <laughs> Poor chose a word maybe, but yeah, like, that, maybe. it's weird to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, I think they generally mean just like getting, getting you know, to know getting their to family. Know. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Choose, choose better words. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> indoctrinate. I'm getting cult vibes. Word uh, is right. too big for us. <laughs> Josh is like, I'm getting flashbacks. Oh no. Uh, Scientology. Uh, oh God. Great episode, by the way. Well, I do genuinely like him. I have always felt that he is incredibly self-serving and self-focused. Recently through a mutual friend, I found out he started a group text between his emphasis on his friends and families to set up the time and date of the proposal. He has not only excluded myself and according to the screenshots I've seen, he is doing everything verbatim I suggested he do but he has completely excluded her family and other close friends from the event. He's planning on only having his boys and family present for the occasion and knowing my friends, this would ultimately break her heart, not being able to share this moment with her loved ones. I got heated and called him. At first he was dodging my questions, then just outright said, this is my proposal and I've spent enough time and money to choose how I do it. Just be happy for your friend. It's not like you're coming to the wedding. Damn. <laughs> This infuriated me. I would rat immediately. I would fucking <laughs> immediately. <laughs> this infuriated me. And to make matters worse, I ran into her mom and dad at the grocery store, subtly asked if they knew any possibility she was getting engaged. They were unaware. And I know for a fact, my friend has told him that he needs to ask her parents for their blessing. She's somewhat traditional. Okay. Uh, my friend wears her heart on her sleeve and I can predict how this event will go down when she sees all of his close friends and family and none of hers. Considering her previous sentiment about his lack of interest in her family life, she will 100% see this as being hurtful and selfish, and I know she'll cry. To make matters worse, the location of the proposal is a whopping 30 minutes from her parents' home. That's not that far. That's not far. Uh, I digress. Uh, I don't want to get involved in a fight or reveal the surprise, but on the other hand, I feel like I owe it to my lifelong friend to help her avoid being hurt and disappointed. Maybe even helping her rethink what her future would look like with someone who just doesn't really appreciate what she values in life. So am I the asshole if I tell my friend her boyfriend is getting is going to propose? No. Okay. You want to explain? Are, they, are, they, are there edits? There are a few edits, yeah. But I want to hear your general uh, I'll say thoughts. no. Uh, this guy fucking sucks. Red flag right away. My proposal. You're not coming to my wedding. Not talking to the parents. Uh, just generally over five years. Not listening to your girlfriend explain that she wants you to be a part of her family, be a part of her friend group. And you kind of just being like, no, uh, yeah, I, I think you suck. And, uh, you know, ultimately it's her choice, you know, uh, she can go through it. Me personally, if I was the best friend, I would fucking rat immediately. You could not, <laughs> you could not, I wouldn't even have time to write this Reddit post. I'd already be on the phone being like, can you believe this motherfucker? <laughs> but that's me personally. I, I could see, you know, how you, how, how Josh is, you know, originally said like, so she has her own chance to say no, let it happen. Yeah. But, but also I would fucking rat. So fast. <laughs> I have a couple things to say about this so far. My first impressions. 
Um, first one, I would say I all I am also getting red flags, like what Sean said. It seems like this boyfriend is trying to isolate the girlfriend from everything. Like, you know, only introduce or only going through it with his side of the family and completely ignoring the best friend suggestions about like having her family involved too. I feel like he's going to try to slowly take her away, especially if, once they get married. So that's my first red flag. A second, I have a theory and it might be wrong, but it's okay. I'm, I'm going to be wrong, but it's all right. I think that the best friend is secretly in love with a girlfriend. Oh, that is my theory. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. I I don't I don't, think I, don't I got think that. So. But <laughs> Again, it's a theory, so it's like okay. it could be completely wrong. It's just a theory, a game yeah. theory. They're just lifelong um, friends, John. You have, yeah. you have tattoos with your friends. You know, you <laughs> know how true. lifelong friends work. If, if this was happening and one of your boys was going to marry like a total narcissist manipulator, I feel like you would probably tell your friend like, maybe don't. Yeah. If like, I'm fucking right, I'd laugh at your face. Just I'm just saying. <laughs> so. <laughs> but I, I mean, know that's I'm wrong. My, you it's my theory. In, you laugh in my face regardless. Uh, every <laughs> every time you say some fucking pun that you know in your heart of hearts that drives me insane, it brings you so much joy. And to that, that true. you guys, why aren't you Venmoing me more? I'm going through trauma just to do the show. <laughs> so much elation just wow. doing that too. Only 20 Roll more years of it, it. Sean. <laughs> well, damn, we're going to last that long? Holy fuck. <laughs> So and then I hope Cultivate sign. is big enough to where we don't have to do the show anymore. Wow. <laughs> you want to break up it. with us? <laughs> break it up with you, John. All right. Oh, before hey. before we break up, let's go into the edits and then <laughs> and see what what's happening. So edit, I did not tell her parents. I covertly inquired if he had spoken to them yet about proposing since it's been five years, like in a joking way. Edit two, the proposal is scheduled for this weekend. I will give you an update on how it goes. After so many responses, I've decided not to say anything and let it play out. I gave him an opportunity by expressing the need to invite her parents and friends like she always wanted, and he chose not to. That's on him, not me. So that kind of goes into a little bit of Reddit's thoughts. They called her an asshole. Uh, They said, don't tell him or don't tell her if it's meant to be, you know, the friend will react how she reacts Mm. Uh, and basically don't spoil it. And just see how it plays out. Uh, you gave him the warning and he did not heed the advice. And so I think I think Reddit was, you know, not necessarily calling her an asshole, but just being like, yeah, don't hey, just see chill. how this plays yeah, out. Let's see, how, see how the karma yeah. uh, falls into place. So I think that's more where Reddit fell. They kind of, I think they agreed with you guys, but they're just that's like, fair. well, let's get his comeuppance. You know what I mean? Let, let him see this through. And so there is indeed an update to this post which I hope we have time for. (laughs) This is going to be a long episode. I apologize, boys. So to everyone who told me to keep my mouth shut, thank you. On Saturday, the day of the proposal, I got a call from her boyfriend. He was screaming at me, blaming me for not showing up, which I was uninvited still, to the proposal with her parents because she was upset they weren't there. I was fucking slack-jawed. I told him I knew this would happen, and he said verbatim, you just admitted you knew this would happen, so if you knew the whole time and you actually cared about her, you would have invited them. That's not <laughs> her was, job. I know. That's not her fucking job, dude. I was gobsmacked and hung up on him. Not even an hour later, I get a call from her asking me to come to her parents. According to her, this is how the situation played out. He popped the question. She said yes. And the people he invited popped out from hiding. She was bombarded by four of his guy friends, his mom, dad, older brother, and sister-in-law. His parents were holding up a sign that read, welcome to the family, miss, insert name here. And this is where things go downhill. Uh Uh-oh. I did not know this before, and I thought I knew everything, but my friend doesn't want to change her last name. And she's told him that repeatedly since they got together. She's an only child from a Ukrainian family, and with everything going on in Ukraine in the last year, she's doubled down. When she saw the sign, she joked, miss, last name? I think you mean miss... And then her last name. Mm -hmm. Everyone went silent until his mom said, well, the ring is already engraved. No changing it now. She takes off the ring and sees Miss, his last name, engraved on the band. Then she asked if her parents were coming. He gave every excuse. He didn't even have their number. There were too many people there. He wanted to keep it private. And eventually he said, this was my proposal to you. And now my family is your family. 
We can just send your parents pictures of later. Oof. She then took the ring off and left. That's when I assume I got a call from him. She went straight to her parents. She asked them about the engagement and they were clueless. She then asked if they, if I knew anything, I asked if she was in the right place and she said, uh, she was. So I told her I would answer any question she had rather than dumping everything on her. She was upset, but thanked me. She was furious when I told her about the phone call from him earlier and said, does he really think I'm that shallow? She said it wasn't about having a perfect proposal or her parents there. It was about him making the whole thing about himself as he always does. And she was done feeling ignored and belittled. So this was her breaking point. She stayed with her parents. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, She stayed with, she's staying with her parents currently and is receiving a lot of texts from him. The worst uh, one so far is him telling her she has to pay him back for the ring for (gasps) ruining his life. Baby boy. No, 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 no. Get (laughs) the If anything, he's lucky that, you know, she left the ring. Because if it were me, I would have took that shit and pawned that shit, left. (laughs) You had, bro, you had the fucking game plan and you still fumbled. Like what the, the friend had an exact thing to do and you still couldn't get that shit right. Oh my God. Homegirl dodged a bullet, man. Like it's. I'm glad, I'm glad he did it. You know what I mean? Yes. Like just because didn't tell him, even if, even if he was like, did this thing right, that doesn't make up for the past five years of, you know, ignoring her request uh, and, and the whole last name thing, you know, it's just, oh, this guy fucking sucks. At that point. Yeah. Yeah. What's more going to happen when they're actually married and have the family controlling, controlling even more. Yep. And, and being weirdly involved with her last name (laughs) like who cares finish it up right now all i can do is be here for her and whatever decision she makes i will fully support her because as you all help me realize this isn't about me it's about her uh not my monkey not my circus well that is is that a common phrase yeah second time i heard that that. i've never heard that before i read it in the last episode that's twice i have heard it before i forget where but yeah it is definitely a phrase um, okay. Nah, that's the first. That's the first two times for me too. Yeah. Me and John are learning about white people culture all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> true. Not my that's monkey. Not is. my circus. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So for us, it's like shit. It couldn't be me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> if it were me, <laughs> we'd be heavily involved. Uh, <laughs> no, I think I think Reddit's judgment was. I mean, your guys' judgment was. You know. No, definitely. You guys were, were thinking about her, but you were also like thinking in the sense of like trying to warn her basically. But yeah, you got to let her have the choice and make the decision because, you know, I think that's what John was on too. Yeah. I think John was like not pro not spoiling it. Right. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, so John was with Reddit. I, I was, okay. I'm, I'm irrational. <laughs> that's fine. So good on, good on OP. You're not, you're not the asshole. I'm, but yeah, good thing you hey. did tell. You stood up for uh, OP st- or not OP, but the, the one that got proposed stood up for herself. And that's all that matters. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. Having that, having that wherewithal to like break up with uh, in that scenario, knowing that the next step is stuck with that guy for like for yeah. the foreseeable future. You did it at the perfect time and you don't owe that guy shit. He's fucking nope. stupid. And his family too. Fuck his family. <laughs> yeah, for real. Exactly. But that is it, Wikimaniacs, for this episode. What did you think? Were these people assholes? Let us know in the comments down below. Um, and if you want to hear absolutely crazy stories in our Patreon exclusive section, it was very uh, passionate. 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 Both were both were very passionate conversations. Yes, uh, <laughs> in their own ways. Uh, so if you want to hear those conversations, go to Patreon.com/slash Cultivate Podcast Network. And join our over 260 patrons. Uh, we have bonus stories every week, every Friday. So go once again, that's patreon.com slash cultivate podcast network. Sign up today. And don't forget, you can cross post your own Am I the Asshole stories to our subreddit. Uh, oh, and speaking of patron, if you pay $10, Wednesday content. Yes, there is Wednesday content for $10 tier. We felt Ooh. you guys weren't getting enough. And so we wanted to spoil you. With riches like of doing that. our voice. <laughs> yes. The sultry um, voices of your boys. Yeah. Someone said my uh, my Wednesday one was uplifting, I believe. 
Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. So they will not say that about mine. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> Don't listen oh. to mine, my future ones after dark or when you're trying to sleep. Let me just say that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Especially listen to mine when it's after dark. <laughs> and you're alone. If you want to fall alone. asleep. <laughs> or if you know, if you want a partner to join, feel free. Oh, but, uh, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm talking uh, about. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be doing this afterwards. Sean, you okay. are setting it up so that people are having sex to your voice. How do you feel about that? Uh, he low likes it. You know, if. <laughs> If uh, if you reach climax listening to my tones, uh, my Venmo is at S E A N S N T P O D. I can you know, only pay your imagine heroes, sexual Sean, or non sexual. Sean stumbling through a smut story, reading it by himself, and two people just having sex to uh, it. And I'm just so, like, this is weird. <laughs> since I'm editing it, you know, Seabat is going to be in the background Ooh. the whole time. Nice, and it's on blam, Patreon, blam, so you can't blam, get copyright blam, blam, strike. Blam, blam. <laughs> We need, we need to find that episode clip again of Josh just saying sex for like 10 minutes straight. Oh, <laughs> just fine. clip it's that on a Wednesday episode. <laughs> That'll just be the background music of all of my... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure someone has it. They they oh, Probably. There have been so many people going through our back catalog. Yes. It's crazy. Thank it's you insane. guys, by the way. Uh, but also apologies. Hey, yes, uh, apologies in a big way. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Sean and John, for coming on today and giving us your takes. Nice to have the gang back together calling out assholes. Yes. Love that. Can't, can't wait to put Sean's face smack dab on a thumbnail again. It'll be nice. Yeah, I got mm. memed even though I wasn't here. Hey, you man. Did. I just yeah, want everyone to remember. <laughs> to be fair, I stagger everyone. Everyone gets some love every week. That's okay. fair. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Wikimaniacs, for another amazing episode. We will see you guys on Monday. Bye. Later. <laughs>